and welcome to MicroStrategy's Mobile App Developer Academy. This model course is entitled iOS Rebranding, Certificates, Provisioning, and Archiving. In this segment, I'm going to go through the steps to certify, compile, and distribute your applications. From previous model courses, your app should already be fully customized and functional in the iOS simulator that we prepared using the MicroStrategy SDK. In other words, the app should have the name, icons, and connectivity that we customized previously. The simulator is not useful though because our end users can't use it. So let's now prepare the app for real devices. Okay, let's get started. First, go to developer.apple.com slash programs slash iOS slash enterprise. If you don't already have membership to the enterprise program, you'll want to sign up for that here. Just hit apply now and follow the steps. The program is only $299 a year, so it won't put a huge dent in your company's pocket. Once you've signed up, hit the Member Center link in the top toolbar. Sign in here with your Apple ID and password. You can see that I'm signed in under the MicroStrategy program. You should see your company's name. Once signed in, go to the Provisioning Portal. The Provisioning Portal is Apple's centralized location slash tool for creating certificates, registering test devices, and creating application profiles for your apps and users. This is where we'll be doing the majority of the work for this tutorial. The first thing you need is a certificate. So we want to go ahead and click the Certificate tab in the portal. The certificate allows a developer to sign the application with their identity that's associated with their enterprise program license. Basically, the certificate is just providing who the developer is and that your app is allowed to be distributed to users within your organization. There are two types of certificates here. One is for development and one is for distribution. We want to distribute our application, so click the distribution tab. If you don't see any distribution certificates, go to the how to tab and follow the instructions or ask your Apple team agent to create one for you if you don't have permissions. Once created, click the download link associated with the certificate. Once downloaded, open the certificate to add it to your Mac's keychain. The keychain is the application that stores all of your keys and certificates on your local machine. Open the keychain application to verify that the certificate was added. You can do this from Spotlight. It should be named iPhone Distribution, your company, with the associated expiration date. We need to check something else in the keychain now. Go to your certificates and make sure that there is a private key associated with your distribution certificates. If you created the certificate, it should be fine. If you did not create the certificate, then contact your team agent or admin and ask them to export their key as a P12 file and send it to you. They'll know what you're talking about. Once they send it to you, just download and open it to add it to your keychain. Without the key and their certificate together, you will not be able to sign and distribute your application at all. In my keychain, you can see that I have both the MicroStrategy Inc. key and the associated distribution certificate. Okay, so now we have the certificate that we downloaded and the key that was used to create the certificate. Both of these are visible in the keychain, so let's move on. Now that we have our certificate, we can register our application. Navigate in the provisioning portal to App IDs and click New App ID. Under Description, we can just put a general description of your app. For example, I used My Example Application. Under Bundle Identifier, we want to put our application's bundle identifier. We set this previously in our Xcode project. Go to your app's Xcode project and take the bundle identifier from the appropriate target summary tab. Copy and paste that into the bundle identifier field in the provisioning portal. There is a trick here that you should use. You want to delete the app ID as the suffix and replace that with an asterisk. With the asterisk, you'll be able to use a wildcard character that allows a single registration for multiple apps. Therefore, in the future, I won't have to register any of my apps as long as they all have the com.microstrategy prefix. This will save us a lot of time down the road. When finished, click Submit. Check the list of applications to make sure your registration was successful. The next step is provisioning. A provisioning profile is a combination of an application ID and a certificate. I won't go into this in depth, but the profile is delivered to your user's devices with the application and is a mechanism for controlling access to and security for your application. 
For example, if I revoke the profile in the portal, the application will stop working on the associated devices. So, to create the profile, go to the Distribution tab under Provisioning. Select In-house as the distribution method. Enter a profile name that you will recognize like My Apps Profile. You should see your distribution certificate under Certificates. Check the box next to it. In the App ID drop-down, select the App ID that you created in the previous step. Finally, click Submit. In the Profile list, find the profile that you just created and click Download. As with the certificate, click Download and open to add it to your environment. It will become visible in Xcode's organizer. Okay, so we're done with the portal. To recap what we just did, we downloaded and or created a distribution certificate, verified slash downloaded the private key associated with that certificate, and registered an app. ID via a wildcard ID. Lastly, we created and downloaded a provisioning profile. Okay, moving on. We only have a few more steps. Go back to your Xcode project and under your target, go to the Build Settings tab. Under the Code Signing Identity section, the auto selector will typically pick the correct certificate from your keychain, but make sure that the correct one is selected before moving on. The next thing we want to do is change the run scheme. The scheme is next to the Run Stop buttons in the left top corner. Click this and change it from Simulator to iOS device. Once the scheme is changed, go to Product, then Clean to clean up our app. Then click Product and select Build to check for errors. You shouldn't have any errors, but if you do, troubleshoot those before moving on. Now that the build is clean and error-free, click Product again and select Archive. After the app compiles, the organizer should launch and you should see your app listed in the archive. Click Distribute while your app is highlighted. We don't want to distribute to the App Store because we only want the app to go to our employees. So click Save for Enterprise and click Next. The code signing identity is what we selected back in the project. The right one should already be selected, but verify this now. Then click Next. Choose a location to save and rename the file as you wish. I'm saving to the desktop just to make it easy to find, but you probably want to save all of your apps into a folder of your choice. If you use a mobile device management MDM solution like AirWatch or MobileIron to distribute your application, then you don't need to check Save for Enterprise Distribution. However, I'm going to go through this part for the brave few who are distributing on their own. Fill in the required fields appropriately. Don't worry about the URL being correct yet, as we can correct that later. When finished, click Save. If you go to the Save location, you will see that two files have been created. The IPA file is your app. The plist file is for non-MDM users. If you use an MDM solution, you're done. Simply give the IPA file to your MDM admin and have them send it out to all of your employees. If you don't have an MDM solution, remember where those two files are and move on to the next MATA course, iOS Rebranding Deployment for Non-MDM. And that's a wrap for this MATA course on Certificates, Provisioning, and Archiving.